Whether it be a lifelong dream or you're just bored during quarantine, making a game is a great way to express your creative energy and let others experience it. Now more than ever, making a game is much easier due to beginner-friendly tutorials and a multitude of documentation online. In this 8 mini tutorial series, I will show you how to create your own level in Unity and publish it online. But why Unity? While Unity is very beginner friendly and easy to understand, their documentation is top notch, it's very immense and detailed, and the engine is just very popular, meaning that if you ever have a question, 9 out of the 10 times, someone online will have answered it already. That also means that they are working on new features and updates to make the engine better and easier to use constantly. Unity also supports almost every major platform, PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, VR, anything you want, they probably have it already. But now let's dive into setting Unity up. So here I'm in the Unity website, so I just searched up Unity Hub on Google, and you can go to the first link. And we want to install Unity Hub right here, this button. Once you install it, you'll get that .exe of your own Windows, and then you can just run it and install it wherever you want. So once it's done downloading, you just open it up and then you can see here on the main page we have our projects. Currently, you might not have anything. Here you have a learn tab where you can download existing projects that they've made, which are very useful. Here in the community, there are some forums and blogs. And then here in the installs, we'll have all your Unity installs. So Hubs is a great tool because it keeps track of all of your installations of Unity, which can be a lot after you start deving for a while, if that's a word. And then it also keeps track of all your projects with their respective versions. So before we actually do anything, you would want to make an account with Unity. So right here, I already have an account. So you just want to click that. And then you want to sign in if you have an account. But if you don't have an account, just create an account on the Unity website. And then after that, we need to activate a license to use Unity for free. So you want to go to this little gear icon here and down here, the license management button. And I have a personal license, which is most likely what you want to install. The personal license is free and you do not have to pay for Unity until you make $100,000 on your game, which is a lot of money. So all you have to do is activate new license, Unity personal, the I don't use Unity in professional capacity, or if you're planning on using Unity to make a game, you can just say, I learn, earned less than $100,000. And you click done and it generates a new key for you. Cool, so once you have the license done, we want to actually install a Unity version. So go to the installs tab and then click add. And then it'll ask you what version of Unity you want. And I would just choose the latest 2019.3. Um, I wouldn't choose 2020 yet because it's still in beta and if you're just starting out this is the most solid release so then you just click next and then it'll ask you what um, build supports you want so basically if you want to build to android you'd want to install this and this is ios it also has webgl support uh, mac support they also have an offline documentation i usually don't download this because i just use the online online one but um yeah you can just select which ones you want and if you're not sure you can just install them later so just click next or done and it'll install it for you and if you're interested in installing the modules later all you have to do is go to these buttons here add modules and you just add the modules you want you can also change the installation directory of your unity because it can take up a lot of space so if you go to this little gear icon once again here in the general tab where it says Unity Editors folder, you can change the, de the path where you want the Unity to be installed. All right, cool. So let's get started on making our project. So if we click new here. You can also select the version using the drop down button. We're going to start with a 2D project because that's the easiest to visualize. And then we will choose a project name. So I'm just gonna name this tutorial series and then also choose the location you want to put your project in and just click create. Awesome, so our Unity has loaded up our new project. Right now, this is how my scene looks like. I'm going to change my layout up here to the default one so it matches yours more. But here is the editor and in the middle you can see you have your scene. So this is where you're gonna see all of your game objects placed in your environment and you can add in new game objects here and move them around. 
When you press play to run your game, it will be shown in the game tab here. Sometimes I like to have them separated so I can kind of see what's going on on the scene view, which might give me a better idea of what's wrong if something's not working in the game view. So on our left side, we have the hierarchy. Our hierarchy shows our game objects on the scene and how they relate to one another. So if we press this little arrow key, we can see our objects and then I can add a empty game object, which is kind of just a placeholder. And then if I right click on that game object and create an empty, that object is a child of this one and childs follow their parents. So this can be useful if you want something to follow around your player, maybe a 3D UI. Um, but for now, we can just discard that since it's an example. So in the bottom, we have our project tab where we can see our assets. And our assets can be materials, images, sounds, our scripts that we're going to use, our scenes. Anything that's in our project is in the assets folder. And then here we have an asset store. If you don't see that, you just go to window. Asset store and it'll show up the tab. So in the asset store, you can find a bunch of cool assets and a bunch of them for free and you can just install them and you can use them in your game commercially. Cool. So let me explain a little bit how the scene works and how to add a object to your scene. So in your scene, you can move around by pressing the scroll button and just moving around. You can also do it with the left mouse button or you can press alt and the right mouse button or you can just press Q. That also works. Now to add a game object to the scene, we just right click in the hierarchy and then we can select 2D object or 3D object. For now, I'm just going to add a cube 3D object. So you can see our cube is now in our scene. If you double click it, you can kind of zoom in. You can also focus in an object by pressing shift F, which is very useful, especially when you're playing a game and you want to kind of follow the player to see what they're doing. And then we can move our cube by pressing W or pressing the arrow key, right? The move arrow key up here, and then we can just move it sideways. By pressing E, we can rotate the cube in any direction on the Cartesian plane. And by pressing R, we can scale the cube. So where exactly are these properties and how can we see them? So each game object has a transform. A transform basically states where it is in your game and what rotation it has and what scale it has. You can see the properties of each game object on the right in the inspector tab. The mesh filter just describes the geometry of the object and the mesh render just takes that mesh filter information and renders that cube onto the screen in the transform position and rotation. And then down here, you can see we also have a box collider that's automatically added. So a box collider can tell you if something is crashing into this object or it prevents objects from crashing into it. And last but not least, we have the material down here. Right now, it's just a default material, but it's basically the color that you want your cube to be and how you want it to be shown in your world. So right now, it's just gray, but you can make it pink, green, anything you want. Before we start our game, we want to download some things that we will need. So first we want to go to the asset store and then we are going to search platformer, oops, platformer free, wow, I can't type, assets, platformer free assets. And you're going to click the first thing that comes up. You want to click the image. And then you're going to scroll down and press import. So I forgot to mention if you don't have it downloaded, it will say download instead. So you just click download. And then after it's done downloading, it's the same process as now. And then after the importing process is done, we're, they're going to ask us, what do we want to import from this package? So right now we're just going to press import because we want to import all of the items. And that will take a while because there's a lot of PNGs in this package. All right, cool. So once the importing is done, we can see in our assets, we now have a new folder from Bayet Games. And then if we click the folder inside, we have a bunch of new images that we can click on. We press PNG. There's a bunch of folders. So right now we have a background. And if you go back, we have a bunch of other folders, chests, enemies, tiles. So like the tiles that you walk on. So it's a very awesome package that we're going to use for this series. 
But before we go on to the next video, we want to install one more thing. We want to go to Window Package Manager. So in the Package Manager, you can install extra packages that you may want. So we're going to put Input System and we want to install the new input system for Unity. And a lot of tutorials show you how to use the old input system, but since Unity is now migrating to this new input system, I thought it would be nice to show you how to use it from the get-go so that you're not confused when it throws an error the next time Unity is updated. And now here we just, there's a warning. We're just gonna put yes. It's gonna ask us to restart the editor and it's just disabling the old input system, which we're not gonna be using. And then we're gonna click save. All right, so now Unity has installed the new input system. So you can just exit out of the package manager. And in the next video, I'll show you how to make your own 2D level in Unity with the tile palette. But before the video ends, I want to show you the final product of what we're gonna be making. So this is the YouTube tutorial that I did previously. So with the assets, so when you click maximize on play and then play, as you can see, the camera moves with our player, our player changes direction correctly and moves the way that we are pressing on the keys. And then we can also jump and then the enemy can go up and down. We have a nice background. If we step on it, the spike, or if we step on the enemy, we go back to the start. And then if we jump over and reach the end, the chest opens and then we just restart the level since we don't have any more levels. So that's gonna be in the end product and very excited for these tutorial series. So if you are excited too, please subscribe and like the video and see you next time.